When's the last time you allowed yourself to be transfixed by the moon? Or the last time you marveled at the uncanny eloquence of a six-year-old? Or even just stopped to appreciate the elegant design of a really well-made chair? I'm talking about wonder. That simple but profound feeling of joyful amazement at life. In our productivity-obsessed world, chances are it's been a while since you've stopped and smelled the proverbial roses. The thing is, we all have an innate capacity for wonder, but too often it's suppressed for the sake of our to-do list or written off as a childish waste of time. But that's holding us back. Wonder plays a big role in sparking innovation, in motivating us, and in helping us find peace in an increasingly chaotic world. Wonder itself may be fleeting, but its results endure, and it is something we can all relearn and develop. These blinks invite you to reopen yourself up to that innate capacity we all share and rediscover the childlike amazement at all that life has to offer. Hey, I'm Amanda, and in the next 15 minutes or so, we're going to explore how reconnecting with our sense of wonder can help us live more creatively, deepen our relationships, and build our resilience. We're going to do this by following the author's lead and learning how to track wonder, that is, Tapping into it with everyday practices you can start with today. All right, so let's get into it. Let's start our exploration of wonder in Tanzania's Gombe Stream Game Reserve. So this is a place known for its lush rainforests and gorgeous lake views, but it's most famous for being the place where Jane Goodall made groundbreaking discoveries about chimpanzees. You know, the stuff like how they use tools and have many social behaviors similar to humans. Some time later, another scientist observes something else extraordinary about chimps. Something not as well known, but perhaps equally compelling. It all started when a particular chimp caught the attention of evolutionary biologist Harold Bauer. This mature male chimp had detoured away from the food foraging area and wandered through thick forest to a 25-foot waterfall. It was magnificent to behold, spraying mist for 70 feet in the dense green forest. There the chimp sat, simply staring. Suddenly he leaped up to pound his fists on the trees and hoot. The next day, he did it all again, and again the next day. He'd sit and gaze, run up to the waterfall, sometimes rock back and forth, and hoot. The chimpanzee's behavior was, uh puzzling, to say the least. After all, the waterfall didn't provide food, and it wasn't a main source of water either. In fact, it was completely out of the way from their food sources. So what was going on with this guy? Well, it definitely makes you, uh, wonder. It appeared that since the waterfall provided no material value to the chimp, that it was possibly doing nothing more than contemplating the waterfall's beauty. Soon the researchers noticed other chimps marveling at the waterfall as well. Renowned anthropologist Marcus Connor posits that these behaviors in chimpanzees suggest that our own tendency to wonder at the beauty of life is something ancient and fundamental, something deeply hardwired into what it means to be human. When we contemplate a sight of power and beauty, like a 25-foot waterfall, It can lift us out of ourselves and into a higher and objectively better state of mind. And that thing is a sense of wonder. Like the chimpanzee's mysterious connection to the waterfall, your own sense of wonder might not have any outwardly practical use. But as we'll find, pausing work to make time for wonder can paradoxically make you more productive by opening you up to approach challenges creatively. Let's get into how exactly we do that by tracking our wonder. It's the practice of tapping into our innate capacity for wonder by developing its facets. Openness, curiosity, hope, and admiration. German poet Goethe wrote that naivete is the most important attribute for genius. More than your IQ... It is your ability to be open to things that can most effectively guide you to creative expression. Goethe may have agreed with Davis's first facet of wonder, openness. To begin, let's look at an example of creative business success that came as the result of openness. 
Carrie Smith, who manufactured rooftop sprinklers, decided to venture into a new business that he didn't know anything about, making giant fans. He named his company HVLS Fans, which stood for High Velocity, Low Speed. Super catchy, right? So when potential customers called, they didn't ask for the company by name because why would they? But instead they asked whether Smith was the person who made the big-ass fans. Deciding to keep his mind open, Smith embraced this and renamed the company Big Ass Fans. The name stuck and his business thrived during the Great Recession while his competitors lagged behind. It was the fact that Smith was open to a new business venture in the first place and then embraced an unusual name that led him to succeed. He stepped into that space of ignorance, put away his fear, and allowed himself to be open again. Entering that space where you don't know the answers and actually striding through it towards new discoveries may not come naturally to all of us, but we can nurture this facet of openness with concrete everyday actions. Listen to others, ask questions, embrace a hobby, visit a new place once a month. Seek out those people who you know will challenge you with new ideas. And here's another exercise you can test out. If possible, go to a place where you can see the horizon. Take a moment for gratitude, acknowledging the good you have in your life at the moment. Then look at the horizon and daydream about the things you can do to reach that horizon, which symbolizes your ultimate dreams. Think about the work you can do to get there and ask yourself what you can create to get there. Like openness, curiosity is a facet of wonder that we had no trouble accessing when we were children. But curiosity is another facet of wonder that's often squashed. As adults, we're taught that curiosity killed the cat and that it's often better to not ask questions. But psychologist Todd Cashton points out that people with more curiosity have higher levels of life satisfaction, well-being, and meaning. And Keith Oatley, a professor emeritus of cognitive psychology at the University of Toronto, observed that those who read literary short stories with ambiguous endings have minds that stay more open presumably because they have to use their curiosity to speculate about a variety of possible outcomes. Or, if they're me, perhaps they're just frustrated. (laughs) Anyway, questioning the everyday is an accessible way that we can all tap into our capacity for wonder. But it works best when curiosity is deployed for its own sake and not in a transactional way. Some of the most successful businesses and life-altering scientific discoveries happened just this way, because someone asked why or how or how come, and not, what can I get out of this? So how do we go about cultivating our curiosity? Well, it might sound cheesy, but in a notebook, write, today I am curious about, and reflect on what has recently rung a bell of curiosity within you. Then, write or draw it. Or start collecting unusual objects that spark wonder within you. In 16th century Europe, people had cabinets of curiosities in which they put things like peacock feathers, micro feathers, exotic beetles, and other things that fascinated them that they had collected from far and near. You can create a curiosity cabinet for yourself. I actually unintentionally curated a bit of a curiosity shelf that holds things that aren't really classed as decor but are meaningful to me. So there's my old pet rock Fred, there's some trinkets from various travels, a little cotton lamb figure that my best friend sent me. Um, So yeah, it doesn't have to be an actual cabinet. You can use a bulletin board or a tray, or like me, you can use a shelf on which you can deposit your own curiosities. And these can serve just as well to help you unlock the facet of curiosity within you. One of wonder's most powerful facets is its ability to inspire hope within us. Naturalist Nikki Van Schindel was rowing in a longboat off the coast of Vancouver, Canada with her partner when a squall hit them. Hurriedly, they pulled up onto a rocky inlet, but realized that being so cold and wet, they were in very real danger of hypothermia. So the pair decided to get back into the water and keep rowing. It was pouring, they were freezing, and things looked dire. But as they rowed, they began to notice neon green sparks shining in the parts of the water where their oars struck. Despite their physical discomfort, they were captivated by what they saw, 
and the wonder of it elevated them into a state of almost magical hope. As they paddled home to safety, the beauty of the rare, bioluminescent algae gave their terrified brains something to marvel at and distract them from being dangerously cold and soaking wet. Hope has so many benefits. Recent studies correlate hopeful people with significant achievements in academics, greater physical stamina than average, and high self-esteem. And it makes sense if you think about it. If you're a hopeful person, then you have the personal agency to plan for a goal and the mental fortitude to go after it. Apathy is the enemy of hope. It's important to stay focused on things that interest you. Set a goal, then take a 15-minute walk to figure out small actions that will help you get there, what some obstacles might be, and how to overcome them. A goal can be as far-reaching as climbing a mountain or starting a new business. It can also be as simple as reading a book within a certain amount of time. Either way, hoping for that outcome is one huge step to reaching the goal. Staying hopeful gives you purpose. When the musician Nick Cave tragically lost his 15-year-old son in an accident, Cave and his wife could find no solid ground to stand on for a while. Then, deciding to lift himself out of despair, Cave created the Red Hand Files— It's a website where anyone from anywhere can ask Nick Cave any question they like. Cave responds with heartfelt letters that connect him with readers all over the world. It's a meaningful endeavor that uses the wonder of hopefulness to lift us out of life's darkest moments. Not only is Cave using the wonder of hope to lift himself, he's also sharing that hope with others. Last, but certainly not least, is the facet of admiration. In the context of wonder, Davis describes it as experiencing a surprising love for someone else's excellence that can awaken us to become better at what we do and how we do it. Now, this doesn't mean to slavishly adore or to defer to someone else in some way. Rather, it means to truly appreciate something amazing about them and share it with them. Now look, This may be hard to do. If you've just spent a day balancing your checkbook and finding your account overdrawn, it might be hard to feel admiration for a friend who has just posted photos from his adventurous vacation on Instagram. Envy can be an ugly thing. It can lead us to secretly celebrating other people's failures. But Davis advises that to truly feel wonder in another's accomplishment, you gotta flip a switch on envy. Instead of wanting them to fail, ask yourself what specific parts you admire and how you can inspire yourself to achieve that too. Instead of saying, I am uh, so sick of Grace's vacation pics, admit that you love the idea of adventure travel too. You don't want to be Grace or take over other aspects of her personality. You just want to travel to exciting places. Once you've recognized this, you can begin taking steps, such as acquiring a second stream of income, that can help you reach that goal. And in the meantime, continue admiring Grace's choices. One very simple way to launch yourself into this mindset is to compliment or congratulate others. Go post on Grace's social media. Awesome photos. I love how you taught yourself to rock climb. And also, don't just stop at the people who you admire. Seek out the people who they admire. Grace may follow a backpacking tour guide who has been to the farthest reaches of the world. You can read up on that person's achievements and learn from them as well. Davis describes it as the mirror effect. Two lit-up mirrors facing each other and lighting each other up. And if someone reaches out to you and compliments you, bask in the wonder of that appreciation too. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this journey of wonder. So in these blinks, you've learned about how accessing wonder can be a means of getting in touch with that curious, open child version of yourself that can help you reach new heights as an adult. By learning how to track the four facets, curiosity, openness, hope, and admiration, you can aspire to better relationships and expressions of your own creativity.